Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Wheel of Time news video. Now this video is going to be super extra thick because we have a fairly major drop from Amazon in the form of a major teaser trailer, a Q&A from showrunner Rape Judkins, and I have some exclusive news concerning trailers and when they're gonna be dropping and what's gonna be in them. So certainly stay tuned till the very end of the video to get all of the big news. But right now, make sure to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. There are still tons of you that watch my videos that are not subscribed to the channel. And this is gonna be the place that you wanna be once the trailers show up and they drop and we get to talk about them. So make sure to subscribe to the channel so you get updated when I release any new video. Do it now. Also, big thank you to the video sponsor, Bespoke Post, but we'll talk more about them later. Let's hit the spoiler warning for the video. Today's video is gonna carry a spoiler rating of yellow, but in a very minor way. There might be some background information about certain characters that you might hear about, but absolutely nothing that's gonna spoil the plot of the books or the show. So as long as you're cool with some basic info being talked about, you are good to watch the video. So peeps, there is a lot to get to. First thing I want to hit on, though, is something that I that I think could not be better for the Wheel of Time show, honestly. If you have not been paying attention, Rosamund Pike, uh, the actress cast to play Moraine in the TV show, just won a Golden Globe Award for Best Actress in her role in the Netflix movie I Care A Lot. Now, obviously, this just adds to her already impressive resume. But most important to Wheel of Time fans, this is bringing a lot of publicity her way and in turn towards the show. Now this is outstanding timing for the Wheel of Time and the higher profile that she has, the more press the show is gonna get upon uh, release, which is something that I am certainly excited for, which is why it makes total sense that the marketing team at Amazon has shifted its focus recently to Rosamund Pike. And that leads us into the clip they released Wednesday. So we're gonna start with the clip released by Amazon right now, but make sure to stay tuned until the very end of the video. I have some exclusive information about the release dates for some new trailers, and I will share some information uh, about that with you. Now let's hit the clip that was released this past Wednesday though by the Watt on Prime team. It's very short, so I'm gonna go ahead and play it a few times for you guys, and then we'll break it down. Do not underestimate the women in this tower. Do not underestimate the women in this tower. Do not underestimate the women in this tower. So, in breaking this down, I think it's first important to take a look at the context of the clip. It's really, really short, and I know that's something that disappointed a bunch of people who wanted a longer clip, but trust me, that stuff is coming, and we'll talk about that later. But in this short clip, there are a number of things that we can pull away. First, let's take a look at what Rosamund Pike said about the clip. She posted the video on her Instagram account, which by the way has more than eight times the following of Watt on Prime's account, showing that she has a huge international reach, by the way, and she posted this. First of all, this is awesome that this is the first time that a lot of non-Wheel of Time fans are starting to learn about the show, and this teaser gives us just enough for people to be curious as to what she's gonna be doing to follow up I Care A Lot. Her caption though says that she is embracing the source of the one power, which I think gives us an idea of what we're seeing. I think that what we're seeing is probably, as she said, embracing the one power. And it's through the perspective of somebody that can see it. So someone that can see her embracing the source. Now this has me pretty damn excited to see a wider angle clip to see kind of how that looks with her full body. I really can't wait to see channeling. Now, I'm not gonna do a frame by frame breakdown of the teaser here, as I'm sure I have nothing really to add to the subject that you guys haven't all seen anyway. And frankly, it's speculation, which I'm gonna talk about here in a moment. Essentially, the background appears to be winter night, like she's channeling and there's fires and stuff going in the background, but it's really hard to tell because the fires aren't moving. Given that it's from the perspective of a channeler, because we can see Moraine embracing the source, I think that there's a possibility that this is the scene where Moraine is explaining the one power to Egwene as well. But again, it's hard to tell. We know from Rafe's Q&A that we'll cover in a moment that the audio was not from the show, but rather recorded for this particular teaser. So I think it's entirely possible that this teaser might be completely created for the show. Now, if you want a more detailed clip or like frame by frame breakdown of what was released, absolutely check out my friend Lauren from Unraveling the Patterns video. He does the most in-depth breakdowns of these trailers. He uses some great editing and special effects. He's a pro at this stuff. If you guys have not checked out his channel, you're gonna absolutely love it. I will partner with him with a number of videos coming up here in the near future. 
I have uh, his channel linked in the description of this video, but here's a short clip from his video so you kind of understand what you're getting. Along with the teaser, Wadam Prime always tweets video descriptions for those who may have different accessibility needs. The video descriptions say, The video opens on darkness as we hear the sounds of a powerful energy in the background. A woman's voice says, Do not underestimate the women in this tower. We then see Golden Globe winner Rosamund Pike emerge with her eyes closed. It's Moraine, legendary Aes Sedai of the Blue Aja. As she opens her eyes, light flows around her before the video ends with a bright flash. What does all of this mean? Who is Moraine Sedai and what is the source of the One Power? Who are the women of this tower and why would it be unwise to underestimate them? What is the Blue Aja? For that matter, what is the Wheel of Time? I can't really answer these questions fully without at least some minor backstory and very light historical spoilers, but I'll do my best not to reveal specific story-related spoilers. Maureen Sedai is an Aes Sedai, or magic user, who was trained in the White Tower. Anyways, definitely check out Lauren from Unraveling the Pattern. Now, I do have some thoughts in general about the clip and what it means for the series. So, first of all, we know the audio clip was recorded simply for this teaser. Now that tells us a couple things. First of all, this teaser is part of a deliberate marketing strategy. It's not simply here to appease the fans. This was backed up by Amazon Prime Video reposting this particular video, the first time they've done that, by the way, and Rosamund Pike herself posting the video. So what this says is they're starting to expand the marketing beyond just the Watt on Prime account, which really is just followed by Wheel of Time fans. Second, we know from one of Rosamund's previous posts on Instagram that she was in the studio recording for five hours, which is clearly more time than it took to record that one line. So that implies that she was recording other content, which is likely other voiceovers and possibly even audio for another trailer. Now, all of this points to the growing trend for the marketing for the show picking up a lot here in the past couple months. Additionally, as I mentioned earlier, the video clip could simply be footage used for the trailer alone, which would explain the lack of the Kisiera on Maureen's forehead. I don't tend to trust teaser footage uh, as much as some other people do because at times it's totally fabricated. It could not even be in the show at all. It, it could really just be here to get us excited. Think of the promotions for the Avengers Infinity War that showed all of the Avengers running, even though that scene wasn't at all in the movie. I'm simply saying that sometimes teasers are there to generate excitement, which this one certainly did, but I don't feel like we can definitively say anything outside of the marketing is ramping up and I'm getting really damn excited. So let's move to Rafe's Q&A. Let's throw up the questions and I'm going to react to each one as we go. I'm going to leave out the few that aren't really serious questions because they're kind of blah answers anyway. So we're going to stick to the wheel of time and serious questions here. So first, where's her jewel? Rafe was asked. And Rafe's reply was, I can confirm here officially that the Kisiera will appear in the show. I can also confirm that I correctly spelled Kisiera on my first try, and I did Google it to double check. So basically, Rafe confirms here that Moraine's jewel on her forehead is going to be in the show, it's just not in this teaser, which I really have no problem with either way. It does seem like a low effort thing for them just to cut out of the blue, so I'm glad it's in the show, I'm glad we, that was confirmed. Rafe is then asked, I know what I'm excited about, but what is our great Lord Rafe most excited about? Rafe answers, I'm not sure if you're low-key calling me out as a dark friend, but either way, I think the moment where Moraine first walks into the Wine Spring Inn was the moment that really made me feel that true fan part of me make unintelligible sounds. So I always love when Rafe gives, like, goes complete fanboy mode here when he answers these questions. This is one of those examples. One thing of note here, though, is that he mentions a scene with Moraine walking into the Winespring Inn. And yes, I know this is a small thing, but that scene is not in the books. So we are possibly and more than likely going to get a lot more of the goings on in Emmons Field outside of Rand's point of view. Because most of Eye of the World, like 90% of the book, is from Rand's point of view, so we don't get to see stuff that happens when he isn't around. So it sounds like we are going to see that, which is something that I totally welcome. Now, we hit on this part earlier, but Rafe was asked next, is the audio disconnected from the scene of Moraine? And Rafe answered, yes, Rosamund actually recorded this audio for this teaser specifically, so you won't hear this exact audio in the show. Well, I'm actually happy that that's the case, because this line of dialogue I don't really think applies to any scene that I can think of from Eye of the World. It implies Moraine is in the White Tower, and that isn't something that I think we're ready for yet. So... I'm glad that's not in the show. Here's a question and answer that I think is going to make a few fans very rowdy, and I'm totally cool with that. Rafe was asked, any LGBT rep in the show? And Rafe responded, 
there's rep in the books and the show. And then ended the reply with not only the gay pride flag, but also the trans pride flag. Now, I want to say, first of all, this means a lot to me. I know that most of you watching this welcome that reply from Rafe, and you're very happy with it. There is a portion of you that is very angry at this response from him. And I apologize that people different from you exist, but they do. You may say, I love all people, but I don't want the story changed to cater to some agenda. And I would argue that the story isn't really being changed. There is no agenda other than to make the show more real. As Rafe said, there is LGBTQ representation in the books as well as in the adaptation that he is making. I could make an entire video on why representation matters to me as well as matters to many other people in the world, and I probably will do that at some point. This video probably isn't the right one for it. Needless to say, though, the story is not going to be changed because there are gay or trans people in the show. It's going to remain intact. You will still love the Wheel of Time. And people who aren't you, that have a different background than you, will actually get to see themselves represented in something. It won't affect you. It will affect them. Be happy in knowing that if you don't understand this change, that it's a very positive thing for some people. And frankly, I know it may seem crazy to you, but something like this can save someone's life. All is going to be right in the world. Don't get super upset. If you are still super, super upset about that answer from Rafe, feel free to leave a comment about how much you don't like gay or trans people in the media that you consume so I can block you from commenting on the videos in the future. Now, Rafe was then asked, what goes into the process of deciding which clips to use for these promo clips? His answer was, we've got an amazing team at Amazon who do all of that. Thanks, Watt on Prime. Now, obviously, there's a dedicated marketing team to the show here that puts this stuff together. They plan these release dates. They run the social media accounts behind the show. Rafe is more than likely is not working on this stuff full time. He's working on the show. <laughs> but he gets told by that marketing team, hey, when do we want to involve you? We want you to answer Q&A, here's the topic, and then he kind of goes ham on that, which is what he's done. So it's awesome that there's a team behind that. Don't think that this is just Rafe sitting in a room coming up with this stuff on his own, though. Rafe was then asked, they don't look ageless. Is this something that is being reworked? Now, Rafe's response was, visual effects that require you to touch every frame that a character appears on screen are not great uses of money. So don't expect to see CGI faces for all Aes Sedai. Now, maybe it's just me, but the phrasing of this question comes off as somewhat passive aggressive and bitchy to me, but I'm glad Rafe answered it like he did. I do not want them wasting a dime of the budget trying to put on CGI ageless faces onto Aes Sedai in the, in the show. Robert Jordan even said when he was asked that he doesn't even know what an ageless face looks like, so there's no real answer to that. If they can pull off some effect that kind of differentiates Aes Sedai with makeup, cool, go for it. I certainly don't care that much about the ageless faces if it means spending all of the money to make that happen. I would rather them spend money elsewhere making channeling cool and showing different locations than making people's faces look different. It isn't a big enough part of the story that it really matters, in my opinion. Now, Rafe was asked by Priyanka Bose, the actress playing Alana Mosvani in the show, what makes Moraine Moraine? And he answered with, what a great question, Priyanka. I would say that above all else, Moraine is a woman who is driven to do what she believes is right at any cost. I do think that describes Moraine pretty well, and certainly Moraine and I of the world. I feel like the heart of the characters is present in this adaptation, and that has me pretty excited. Lastly, Rafe was asked, Can you tell her I'm on my way? by Yosha Stradowski, the actor playing Rand. Now, this is a continuation of a bit of banter that Yosha and Rosamund had on Instagram. Rafe replies, Go tell her yourself. I love this simply because it seems like the cast not only gets along, but they have some chemistry and they're genuinely excited about their roles, talking about it, stuff like that, which is pretty fun. In general, what I love about the Q&A sessions from Rafe is that they give a glimpse into the process behind the show, as well as some small snippets of what we might expect. I don't think we learned a ton in this particular Q&A that we didn't already know, at least. Outside of maybe the ageless face discussion, but I still love hearing from Rafe. I don't think people realize how different it is for a showrunner to be this involved with the fan community. This is completely not normal, people. Don't get spoiled into thinking that we're entitled to be able to interact with the, the show account and the showrunner like we are. This is unique in, in all of uh, TV media that I've seen. The major marketing is going to come. 
But the stuff they're doing right now is for us, although this one is starting to, to step into the larger audience. But that all being said, let's talk about the major marketing and my exclusive announcement. But first, let me mention the video sponsor, Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a subscription box service that sends a bunch of really, really cool stuff at a low monthly price. Typically, the value of the boxes is well over 100 bucks, but because they buy these items in bulk uh, from local people and then they send them out, you're gonna get a super low cost for stuff that's worth a lot of money and you can mix and match these boxes. Last month, I got the smoked box. The box comes with all of the things necessary to make a wood smoked cocktail, something that I make use of often now. This is something that you can literally only get at high-end steakhouses typically, but now I do this every time I make myself a Woodford Reserve on the rocks. This is one of many things that I've added to my home bar and even if you aren't a drinker, they have tons of boxes for you or someone that you care about. These things make great gifts, great gifts. They're awesome. Click on the link in the description of this video to get signed up for the service. I've gotten incredible feedback from a lot of you on, on these boxes and I get mine every month. I actually pay for mine. They don't send, just send it to me. So I love it. I wholeheartedly recommend this. Now, let's get back to the video. So lastly, guys, I'm gonna share some information that was given to me a little while back concerning trailers and release dates. Now. I am not in the business of sharing leaks from the studio, spoiling things that the show wants to be hidden, or anything of that nature. It's just not what I do here on my channel. There are places you can get that and that's great. It's just not what I do. And with this particular information, I'm gonna share what I feel comfortable sharing without giving too much away. In short form, I was given potential release dates for a number of trailer releases and how they would be released and what would be in them. I can't independently verify the information I was given but it appears not only very credible, but very likely. That being said, I am not going to give out those specific dates and what's gonna be in those trailers, simply because I wanna protect the surprise for a lot of people and I don't want that information getting out. I will say, however, and this is the part that I will talk about, that we are nearing those trailer release dates in the very near future. Within the next two months, you're gonna see a couple teaser trailers and within the next three, you will likely be seeing a full teaser trailer on television. So here's my takeaways from this one. One, that's really damn exciting. Come on guys, think about the first time you see that pop up on your TV in a commercial. Tell me you're not gonna freak out. I love the information that we get, uh, the clips and stuff from Watt on Prime. They go above and beyond for us. I mentioned that earlier, but I am certainly chomping at the bit for a lot more and that's coming soon. Second, Let's talk release dates for the show. I have my guesses as to when we're going to see the Wheel of Time release. Based on the information when the trailers are gonna drop and with Amazon's record, I'd say we're looking at a fourth quarter of 2021 release. So that could be as soon as like fall, but it could be later during the winter. Now, here's some things that might help pinpoint that date for us though. The Boys season two launched in September of 2020. Now we know season three of The Boys is gonna come out this year as well, we don't have an exact date except late 2021. Now, if they follow their history, which they typically do, The Boys season three is gonna get released in the fall. And during that show, that would be a great time for Amazon to be promoting the new Wheel of Time series during their most popular show at the, at the moment, which is The Boys. So my prediction, assuming all this goes well, is that we are going to get the Wheel of Time either around Thanksgiving or early December of 2021. So what do you guys think of the possible release date? What about Rafe's Q&A and the release from Amazon? Are you guys more or less excited now based on what you've heard? Let me know in the comments of the video. Additionally, if you were not aware folks, I am a podcaster now. I've teamed up with Recapa Sedai from Wheel Talk here on YouTube, Jesse, the Omerlin Seed, formerly of the White Tower podcast, and now of the Omerlin Study here on YouTube. We've created a Not Safe for Work podcast all about the Wheel of Time, but it's a little bit more comedic take on it. We've taken a completely different approach to a podcast and the response so far has been amazing. People are saying they love the format, so I'm pretty excited about that. This week we had Daniel Green on and it was a ton of fun. Here's a short clip for you. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm excited to have you here, Daniel. Uh, it's been a little bit. I have a couple stories to tell about Daniel, but we're going to save that for later in the show. Um, he doesn't know I'm going to tell any of them. And they're not really, yeah. but I make it sound like they're awful. They're not, but as long as, as long as you don't bring up the priest in Boston, we're good. Oh, oh. Well, oh. Shoot. he went there. Oh. He went there. He went there. 
Daniel Whoa. Green, the goblin who went there. Oof. You know, he's really going to fit in on this not safe for work podcast. Um, yeah. oh, I listen to episodes. I know where you guys go. So I'm, I'm yeah. just going to go. <laughs> he's prepared. I mean, I figured there were enough like G rated podcasts out there that, you know, we could, you know, jump over the line a little bit here. And I'm incapable of not swearing for any period of time. So my, uh, uh my options are limited. Yeah, I have, I have that problem too. So you can find the links to the podcast in the description of this video. I hope you guys love it as much as I love making it. Please support the channel on Patreon if you love what we do here. Uh, you can find the link uh, in the description of this video, or you can just go to patreon.com forward slash Nablus. It's truly the best way to help us grow the channel and continue to provide you great content. Thanks to everybody that already supports the channel there. Please hit the like button on this video, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon and leave a comment on the video. Thank you for watching everybody and until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. My mistress up above slipping on a robe of blue. She prances down the staircase a fancy us a free crying tinker. Oh dear tinker won't you mend a pot for me?